Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. I just want to talk to you a minute about um, Muslim or Islamic apologetics and the defense of the Christian faith. And I just want to share a thought. I, I, I'm preparing it for some debates with some Muslim apologists and they're professional debaters. So I've been listening to what they've got to say. I've been studying some of their ideas and their thinking. And it's really hit on to me how they've thought through their strategy that they're really focusing on undermining the integrity of the Bible text. So you can defend the the atrocity of Jesus. You can defend um, you can defend the resurrection from historical data, whatever. But if they can undermine the text then everything else will collapse and so they're spending a lot of time and a lot of energy over the years working on how they can undermine the text of the New Testament and the Old Testament so um, people like Mike Lacona, Jay Smith and uh, James White they defend Christianity, I mean James White is a presuppositionalist but they still defend Christianity with a very kind of loose defense in textual criticism where they will admit that there are things in the Bible that shouldn't be in the Bible so for example the woman who's caught in adultery uh, the last ending of Mark the Trinity text in 1 John and they're at ease with that and they're happy with that but that really undermines your defense of the integrity of the text um, now I've made a number of videos, I've, I've made about six videos on this um, so you can go and look at what I've said but all I'm saying is this, is that the Muslims have a strategy in their apologetic defense to undermine the biblical text and I think that the J. Smith, Lycona, uh, James White way of defending the integrity of the text is very very weak and there needs to be a much more robust defense of the Bible uh, I've, I think that um, for example it doesn't fare much within modern academic scholarship and it doesn't fare much within these apologies defense the doctrine of what is called the doctrine of the preservation of scripture um, there's very little understanding or reference to, for example, the great confessions of faith and how they taught scripture and how that is to impact our textual criticism. Um, so this is really a, a video to technical apologists, philosophers, theologians, and all I'm saying is think about it. No matter how much historical, philosophical data you bring to defend the Christian faith if your opponent undermines your authority i.e. your text then everything else will crumble and I do think that as Christian apologists we're not as strong and as robust in taking on the issue of the text there, there's there's a need to go back to our theological position i.e. go back to the Westminster Confession go back to the uh, 1689 Baptist Confession to go back to our great confessions to read and study those confessions what they say on scripture to study the scripture themselves to see what the scriptures say about scripture then to develop our textual criticism from a theological basis there's an urgent need and an urgent cry to do this and I believe if we go about doing this if we if there are people out there who begin to write books saying this is what the biblical position is what the Bible teaches about itself about its, it, it itself and therefore when we're looking at textual criticism we're going to look at it theologically and so when we begin to write textual critical books uh, based on a theological basis 
we'll see and begin to see a revival of a much more stronger, robust defense of the text of the Bible. I'm aware that there are textual critics like Wallace, there are textual critics, many textual critics who are evangelical. I'm very aware of that. I'm very aware that there's some very eminent scholars. But there's a weakness, that there is a weakness because a lot of these uh, evangelical textual critics are influenced by modern textual criticism. They've imbibed presuppositions without thinking about it. And we need to return back to, a th um, to our confessions and turn back to what to see what the Bible says about itself. Looking at it, looking at, then begin to look at and write books about textual criticism from a theological point of view. We need to take back textual criticism into the domain of the church, and rather than allow secular scholars to define our methodologies and the way we approach this topic. And there's an urgent need for scholars to have the courage to come back to a more confessional, theological approach to textual criticism. And then we can defend the text of the Bible in a much more robust way. But at the moment, a lot of apologetics is hampered because the authority of that apologetic is being undermined by Muslim apologetics attacking the text. And I've given uh, six hours of talks on this. I've tried to show some scholarly way forward. But it, it, takes, it needs people who are professional textual critics to hear what I'm saying and to develop this. In, in a more academic way, writing articles and books. I'm just the seed provider, the ideas man. Um, it needs people who, who, who have got PhDs in textual criticism to have the courage to hear what I'm saying and to begin to s tackle textual criticism from a theological position and from a church position and from a confessional position and from a biblical position, well, what, what does the Bible teach about itself? And that is completely different from the realm where we're in at the moment, where the church has moved away from its confessional basis, where the church, where, where, where secular scholarship has taken control since the Enlightenment of the methodologies and strategies and thinking about textual criticism. So we need a reverse trend, a reverse movement which takes back the ground that has been lost and to rethink this issue from a more biblical, theological and church perspective. And in that way we'll see a revival of a much stronger defence of the text. Whereas at the moment we're opening ourselves up to punch upon punch upon punch upon our chin, knock out blows by Muslim apologists to see an open goal at this present time and it's going to get more and more difficult as time goes on because as Islam grows stronger in the West with it attacking and undermining the authority of the Bible it will gain even more ground so we need to write pamphlets and books and lectures and to write PhDs, write more books in defending the integrity of the text and inspiration of the Bible. This is really, really needed. I, I'm just uh, an ideas man, and uh, I, I like to think uh, in a strategic way, and uh, I, I think this is a big area where it needs to be addressed, seriously needs to be addressed. So if you are a top academic, if you are a PhD student, an MA student, if you are uh, a theologian, a philosopher, uh, an apologist, then I, I, I give you that challenge to develop this uh, a new apologetic, a new way forward in defending much more vigorously the integrity of the text of the Bible. You know, so to build on the work of people like 
F.F. F. Bruce to build on the work of people like B.B. Warfield but to, to tackle it in a much more robust theological confessional church based position it really needs to be done uh, and, and it's been a long time overdue now I know that there are many scholars out there um, who see what I'm saying is right and uh, I know that they're seen as fringe scholars in the academic world but it doesn't matter the position that I'm expounding is a right position it's a true position and it's a biblical position what is needed is for more mainstream academic scholars to realize how strategic this is concerning Islam Islam is going to advance more and more in the West and this is going to happen if this issue is not addressed now it needs to be addressed now and I'm beginning to address it in terms of I'm focusing on is the Quran and focusing on Quranic textual criticism so I'm focusing in that area at the moment and I'm beginning to challenge the Muslim community in Hyde Park on this issue and I think I'm gaining ground and it's becoming effective but the other side is we need a more robust defense of our side in the area of textual criticism just these are my ideas my thoughts you know so I'm offering them to you and I'm asking you to seriously if you are working in a university or a theological seminary and you want to do some research why not write a book or, or write a PhD in this area because it's much needed today it, it really is needed and and we need more PhDs and more work done on the and the comparison between textual criticism of the Quran and textual criticism of the Bible I know that uh, Small has done a finished his PhD a few years ago and he did a work on the textual criticism of the Quran but we need more work done on the textual criticism of the Quran and the Bible and but we need to start looking at this in a much more theological biblical church based way of thinking um, and tackle this in a, in a fresh way because we're, we're I know Wallace has debated Bart Ehrman on textual criticism, he did a good debate and there's a certain way of debating textual criticism and, and the debate goes something like this it kind of says look there are hundreds of thousands of variants but only it only affects one percent uh, the manuscripts have been preserved generally speaking and and, it, and that's a pretty good defense as far as it goes but there's still a big weakness there is that what do you do with that one percent and how do you explain that and we need and and what text are we using why are we using these texts and what's the theological base for this not not just the manuscript base there has to be a, a theological base in in terms of looking at how does this fit in with the doctrine of preservation of the text if we don't do this we're going to weaken ourselves one or two scholars might understand what I'm trying to get about get 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 to this is a technical issue but it's an important issue Muslims have thought this issue through and they're attacking with all guns blazing the integrity of the Bible text and what we're doing is we're doing a minimal facts apologetic mainly I know that James White is a piece of positionalist but mainly people are doing a, a minimal facts kind of approach in defense but they're leaving the authority of the text undefended and that undermines the defense of the Bible it undermines the defense of Christianity so we need to strengthen up this issue uh, rapidly quickly and and as, as fast as we can um, and shore up the defenses so come on get moving ladies and men God bless you